Hi, I'm Chris and I quickly want to show you a nice 3SS 3D effect. So this is the HTML that I'm using for this. It's a div with an ID logos, an ID cube on a link that points somewhere, and two images inside there which have the IDs of front and back. And they all have their alternative text, so everything is fine. So what can I do with this? Uh, I, the normal way of doing that would be to just do a rollover, give them different Z indexes and actually show one or the other when you roll your mouse over it. But with modern browsers like this uh, Firefox Aurora here, for example, I can do much fancier stuff. So when I roll over this one here right now, it actually shows the images on a, bo on a box, on both sides of a box that rotates in 3D space. So you can see this here. If I roll out again, it does it backwards. I can actually do that, but I can hide the logo that is not visible, that you would see from behind. So in this case, I see the logo one time from behind and one time from the front. If I never want to see it from behind and I want to have an effect that the logos flow in, I can hide the ones that are actually not visible or not visible from the front. And if I don't want any of that cube effect, but I still want a nice, uh, a nice flip effect, I can use this flat version here that just rotates the logo and has a, so to say, a card with the logos on two sides. So how is this done? It's actually CSS transitions, which is pretty simple. But all we also wanted to know, what I also wanted to explain is actually how the whole 3D thing works, because that's what where I got stuck. And every time I get stuck, I thought it's a good idea to build myself a little tool for that. So that's why I built this 3D CSS tester. And there you can see how the whole thing happens. So you have a z-axis, which is the depth, you have a y-axis, which is the uh, the vertical one, and you have an x-axis, which is the uh, which is the horizontal one. And you got a perspective. So the logos the diff that I have around the link gets a perspective of 800 pixels. The 800 pixel perspective means that the block that you, uh, that the cube that we have here, the 3D space, is 800 pixels away from the screen for the viewer. So when you do this less, it comes closer and it's much, much bigger. So if I change that to 200 here, for example, then it becomes much, much larger and it's actually rather annoying to have that effect there. Uh, when I do it f uh, bigger, it becomes smaller. So the best way of doing that is actually a uh, co container of like 600 to 800 looks the best. So in this case, we have an 800 pixels here. And then we can actually start thinking about rotating this in the 3D space. So uh, this here is a Firefox Aurora. But to actually show it much easier or to show it much nicer because we have support for the number fields, let's switch quickly to Chrome. So in Chrome, we got the same tester here. And I can actually change these coordinates right now. So if I change something here, the animation stops, and I can actually start playing with that. So now we have a 3D space to play with. So I can do all kind of fancy stuff with that. So I can shift the whole space around, the whole cube space, or I can actually start rotating it. So if I rotate it in X direction, I rotate around this X axis here. So I can actually start doing this, and you will see that the main um, the main link the logos link is this blue stuff here and the two logos are on either side of that i can do the same thing in the y-axis and i can do the same thing in the z-axis so you can actually see the rotation in all three of them and you can try that out yourself so how is the cube effect done and that's a bit of the confusing thing so to see it let's rotate in y-axis for 40 and then you can see the logo is in the back here and the logo is in the front here. If you look at the location of the logos, though, they're both 100. And this is the distance from the logo to the main pane. So if I change that to 0 here, it will be on the main pane. If I change it to minus 50, it's behind the pane. But the other logo is actually plus 100, but it's on the other side. And the reason is that it's rotated 180 degrees. So instead of rotating the logo in itself or the image in itself, which means that you just would see the background of it, the rotation across the y-axis rotates the whole thing across the y-axis. So while it is 100 pixels away from the other one, so let's turn that off quickly here so you can see that, while it is 100 pixels away from the, uh, from the, main, uh, from the main axis, it actually, from the z-axis, it actually is also rotated 180 degrees, which means it shifts it behind the pane. So if I don't do that rotation, I would have it where the other logo would be. If I just change it around for 30, for example, it changes like that. If I change it around 90, it will be on the other side of the pane. And the same way I can do with the front logo. So if I change the front logo here to minus 90, 
then those two actually are on this side and we got minus 50 here so let's do 100 here you have it on both sides of the cube so that's another way of doing that you can do that rotation in any which way you can actually do a 90 degree rotation here to have it on this side of the cube and a 90 degree degree rotation on the other one to have it on this side we can also have a minus 90 to turn it the other way around so I can shift these panes anywhere around the distance of them in the z-axis doesn't change it's just a hundred which shows it should be a hundred away from this main point here here in the middle and this is actually all that you need to know about this but it's actually quite sweet what you can do with that because you can shift things around you can do all kind of fancy stuff so when you want to see how the flip rotation is done the last one that we had in these examples it's actually all of those uh, at zero and then it's just simply rotating it around so this one here the flat rotation is simply done by giving none of these uh, z index so they all are in the same uh, on the main pane and <coughs> sorry and the uh, y gets 180 degrees again which means it's behind the other logo and when i now start rotating that you will see that it actually well it blinks a bit so there's a bit of an error in there but you'll see that one of them is behind the other so i guess if you give that one a one and you give that one a minus one then this flickering should not happen there we go. Well, it still does. It's a bit buggy all in all. Talking about buggy, one thing that is interesting here is that in Safari and in Chrome, the back face visibility totally works, and in, uh, in, in Aurora as well. What does that mean? It means if you, want, if you don't want to see a logo when it actually is not, uh, is not facing you, you can in this case turn off the back face uh, visibility, and when you turn this now 40 degrees, you will, oh sorry, that's the back. The, you will see that it actually is not shown when it's not viewing uh, the camera or the spectator. And this is actually really handy if you want to have just a cube that only shows the front sides and stuff like that. And it works uh, fine in Aurora here, but it's actually a bit of a bug in Chrome, which is bad, but fair enough. So once you've done that, once you're happy with your settings here, uh, in the editor, you can actually now start create this, uh, clicking this create full page here, and that creates a full page for you. And it doesn't only do the perspective for uh, Mozilla or for uh, for WebKit, but for all of the browsers that in the future will start will start doing that as well. So if you take this created code right now and you put it, for example, in this created uh, page here, and you save that one, and you reload it, you got your effect in. Uh, an HTML page that you can actually start playing with. And that's all there is to it. So have a play with the CSS tester, have a play with the rollovers, and I hope that actually makes the whole 3D thing much, much clearer.